Hi YouTube. So I've got lots of thoughts thinking inside of my head and I have a, a, li a kind of an outline of the topic that I wanted to touch upon um, simply because I've been seeing a lot of it being touched upon in different um, pagan and wiccan and witch forums on Facebook. And I, I follow a lot of Facebook um, pagan and witch and witchcraft based communities and um, I, I run one of my own um, and so this is just something I want to talk about from my own experience um, and things that it, it's something I had touched upon before actually in my my Be the Witchy Change video I had made a brief mention of it about you know not assuming all Christians are the same. And it kind of hails back to that, you know, the, um, I'm, I'm pagan, I identify as pagan, I identify as a witch. Um, hi kitty. I, I identify as pagan, I identify as a witch, and, um, I, I feel like I've been around some people sometimes, or a lot of people think that because I identify as pagan, and I identify as a witch. I automatically don't want anything to do with Christianity. I don't like Christians. I don't, I think they're bad. I think they're terrible, which is not the case. Um, so I'm just going to talk about my view on what I feel is like, it, it's not a huge um, issue for everyone. I think it has a lot to do with where someone is on their path and, and how much healing they've gone through and how much education they've gone through. Um, and I should just get to the point. The whole point is this whole pagan versus Christian thing or like pagans hating Christians or Christians hating pagans and, and the realm of like Christians being witches and the Christo pagans and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go to one of the things that really spurred it off on me is I had seen an article, I think there was actually two different articles, but they were both concerning the same thing about how, um, with the millennials, there is a, a, a growing portion of the populace who are identifying as Wiccan or spiritual or new age. And the percentage is higher than what it is, it Presbyterians? I think that's what the article said. And I, I think there were two articles that were going around. One that kind of had a more, like, pagan feel, and one that had a more Christian feel. And, um, it seemed like the one that had a more pagan feel, people, I, I saw it in communities, people were like, yeah, that's awesome! And, like, yeah, it's about time! You know, and they were really, really happy that there's more... Wiccans or pagans or whatever than this particular denomination of Christians while on like the Christian standpoint some of the Christians were viewing it as like the end of times kind of thing and that whole dynamic on both sides for me I, I find it like ridiculous like I, I don't see why it really matters I, I mean I think it's a good gauge to be like, okay, so the, the popularity of this particular religious and spiritual belief has raised so much that it's it's larger than this percentage of this particular denomination of Christians. Okay, is that good? Is that bad? I don't think it's either. It just is. I think it's it's good. Um, though they they talk, in the article I read they they talked about it as millennials. Though I. I don't know if it's true or not from my observation. It just seems like there's a lot more people, both young and old, people who are new to their spiritual beliefs or people who have been on the spiritual beliefs for a very, very long, on their particular path for a very long time, but they've been closeted. seems like there's a lot of older pagans and witches and Wiccans coming out of the broom closet. People who've been doing this for a very long time, but they're just now coming out of the broom closet as well because it's safe now. It's, it's essentially safer. Um, but I just, I don't know if I necessarily agree with this whole, like, 
I guess it, I feel like some people th see it as a big, like, F you to the Christian community. And I, I don't view it as that. I just I'm like, okay, that's interesting. I also find it interesting of how many of these people, you know, yes, they might identify as pagan. They might identify as Wiccan. But how long are they going to identify as that? Are they going to identify that 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later? Or are they just going to change their mind in 10 years? Or are you going to have a lot of people like we have now where I live, we have a lot of people who are Christian. They are Christian, but they are very, very, very spiritual people. And this is where, I, before I go much further into this topic, this is what brings me into um, the, the, the Christian versus pagan thing. Because um, a lot of people, myself included, who are pagan, did not necessarily get raised pagan. We weren't raised pagan. We had to figure it out on our own. What's up, babe? We had to figure it out on our own um, with little guidance. You know, if, if you live in a, a bigger city, you, you might have easier access to metaphysical shops, witchy shops, covens. Oh, hey, hey, But when you live in a smaller town, such as Can the one I grow up in, they're... And it's fired up. Fired up. Yeah. Where, where I grew up in, we had like fire. one or two metaphysical fire. shops over the years that fire. didn't stay around long. Most of our new age shops were more like health food kind of places. <laughs> um, and if we really wanted to join a coven or a group, we had to travel sometimes two hours away. So we're just kind of hacking it on our own. And as I had said, a lot of us were raised Christian. Not all of us. Not all of us. Oh, honey, I'm making a video. I'm making a video right now. Mommy is seven minutes in. At this point, I need to continue. Um, what was that? Mm, pagans being raised Christian, all that. Um, with that being said... Um, it can leave a sour taste in some people's mouth because some people, depending on the denomination of Christian that they came from, can be m more rigid. And I've noticed that in the pagan community, there are some people, some pagans, my, and I, I was one of these myself, and I still have my moments, um, that like to lump all Christians into one category and act like they're all the same way. And the thing is, though, in the Christian belief, uh, um, for a while I really took to using the term Abrahamic, but I don't think everybody really knows what that term means. Me, That's super cool. Can you back it up? It's like really in my face, man. No, I don't like it. I love you. But there's there's huge selection of Christians. I love you. I love you too. And a, a, lots and lots of denominations. I mean, you have different people who consider themselves Christians and they don't all believe in the same thing. I had mentioned this before, but I mean, we, I can just rattle off some. You've got your Catholics, you've got your I came from brethren. That's what I was. I am awake! I came from brethren. I mean, you have people who are Amish and Mennonite who are also Christians. You have people who are, are the Latter-day Saints. Mormon people, they're Christians. And you'll have Baptists, You'll have Presbyterians, Presbyterians, oh, Protestants, um, and all in between. And Seventh Day Adventists. They're all different versions, all different denominations of Christianity. And they all believe vastly different ways. Um, vastly different ways. And then there are large numbers of Christians who do not go to church. They would be like the the, the Christian version of solitary pagans who they practice on their own because they don't necessarily like having a pastor tell them how they should practice and how they should believe and how they should interpret the Bible. And there's actually a number of Christians who do not follow the Bible. Who, are, who identify as Christians and they don't follow the Bible. And and you know how in the pagan communities there's lots of fighting of oh well you're pagan you, there's the Pakistani <laughs> people who like to say you can't do this and you can do that if you have this and this and this no it's like this no it's like that the same thing is in the the Christian community and so when I find 
I, f I find in some of the pagan communities, people will get very caught up in berating Christians. But really, they'll just be rating a particular denomination or a particular type of Christian that they know. Um, and and I, that brings me back to where I live. There are a lot of people who are Christian. They believe in Jesus. They believe in God. They believe in the, you know, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They they believe in that. That is, they, they do all the but Christian I'm holidays. Stinky He's Chris. I love you. <laughs> You're stinky and you love me. Okay, I love you too, stinky. Um, stinky but, I love you. But, um. They would be nonetheless extreme, extremely kindred spirits. You know, we have tarot card readers who are Christians. You know, there, and when you have a lot of people have a hard time understanding things like Christian Wiccans or Christo Pagans or all of them. I I'm starting to understand it. Um, the way I understand it, which I know is not valid for all people who follow those paths, but how I, my brain can understand it is. Um, the, the, the Christian, a large percentage of the, the Christian um, paths have just a male, kind of a male-oriented God. And um, when they incorporate um, the pagan side, they would incorporate the female aspects of that. That's not true with everyone, but that's just how I can kind of understand it. Um, and... I, I say this, and I, people, I, I've seen posts where people be like, oh, that's sounding awfully Christian of you, and it's like, it's a bad thing. Well, <laughs> I was raised Christian. I was raised Christian. Um, I'll give you a little bit of my history, and, and I have history with the Christian church, and I have history that sh I, some people would say I have every reason to have serious hatred toward the Christian church. Um... I, I went to church as a kid. I went, I was in the family. My mother took my sister and I to church and we went every single Sunday. They, we were those people that went in and we did Sunday school. We did church. My mother was in the choir. She was a Sunday school teacher. She, um, did evening services for a while. I would go with her to Sunday evening services. Um, uh, my sister participated in youth group. I did what we had, what we called um, youth rallies, where we would compete with our sister churches in singing and puppeteers and um, like quiz team, where it would be like Jeopardy for the Bible. Like I was very active in my church. N not to say that I, I enjoyed the community. I didn't necessarily believe in what they were teaching. But I learned a lot in concepts, you know, um, I, I was able to apply a lot of what I learned in church and in, in these, um, like winter retreats and church camp. I went to church camp every year for pretty much as long as I was there. Um, and I, I learned, I really did learn a lot about, I learned a lot about spirituality, um, and here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Um, when I was about 15 going on 16, uh, I, I really, at that point, I was going astray. There is absolutely no question about it. But I did the church thing. Not the church thing in the sense that, like, I denied being Christian and pretended to not No, Like, I, I always admitted to going to church. But even when I was at church or at school, like, I, I knew I really wasn't. Christian, but I did the activities. I, I participated in the youth group as much, not as much as some. Um, I wasn't, I don't feel like I was a rebel. I looked weird, but I don't, I wasn't like a condescending jerk in my youth group. Um, but basically what happened was a misunderstanding where I was already starting to go astray. And, um, we, we had a, like I had said, I, I used to do youth rallies. We were supposed to have a rehearsal of some sort, and there was a miscommunication. I was not informed that a, uh, a rehearsal was canceled. And me being a pissy 16-year-old, I was like, I'm just never going back there. I'm not doing that. And, um, and before then, I never really thought I had a choice to not go. Even though it didn't fit with me, I didn't feel like I had a choice to not go. 
and being a pissed off teenager, um, my, my father, who is the type of atheist who likes to berate people and tell them how stupid they are and pick up, he, he's one of those atheists that give atheists a bad name. He is the reason why people hate atheists, that he's that type of atheist. So he enjoys berating people and picking about their, Bi their, their Bible verses and their religion and trying to point out all the flaws in them. So just letting you know. So in his, his manner, he thought it was a good idea. I didn't learn this until like I was in my twenties to call up the pastor and curse the pastor out. Nowhere in my life did I want that to happen. I would have much rather just like quietly vanished off in my little huffy tantrum, but them not actually seeing my huffy tantrum because I never did. Um, later on, the one kid that was in charge of that particular like church band I was in caught up and apologized. He's like, oh, you know, it was my, I should have told you. And I'm like, no, it's not your fault. I mean, it, it wasn't his fault and I still don't view it as his fault. And after my father cursing out the pastor, about a month or two later, I got a letter in the mail telling me that I was no longer a member of the church. Mind you, at that point, my sister had not attended church in probably a good three years. So I, I was kicked out of my church. I'm talking, I was baptized in this church, went there from the age of seven to just shy of 16. And I was kicked out of my church kicked out of it and it still exists the church still I live down the street from my church so I'm, I'm I'm one of those pagans who really if I wanted to I could hold a lot of hostility toward Christianity um, but I don't because I understand that not everybody believes that way in Christianity um yeah yeah so that, that's a little bit of a, a candid bit of my history yeah um, what now? What if I was my machine and the other machine? No, I'm making a video. Can okay, I finish okay. my video? And I, I really would like to to be able to do this <laughs> on, on my own because mommy has a hard time focusing. Ooh. And when you're in here, I want to hang out with you and talk with I you. I also have a banana. I know. You have a banana leg on though. Oh, but, it's um, a banana gun. I know. Let's see. What did I cover? A banana. It's a banana. So, yeah, coming back to, you know, each person comes onto their path in a different place. And there was a time that I, you know, that was my thing. I was kicked out of church. You know, <laughs> isn't it a good Christian thing? Instead of kicking your youth out of your church. Victor, I'm, I'm vlogging, honey. I'm, I'm vlogging. Um, but I, I was one of those people that at a point I was like, oh, well, wouldn't a good Christian church really hey, try to hey, um, hey, mama, mama. bring their youth in that's gone astray instead of kicking them out in this sort of situation? You know, I've, I've been there. I've been there. And I've, I've learned that depending on where you are on your path, and it doesn't matter if you just started your path or you've been on your path for 50 years, you can still hold these judgmental things in your in your heart and these this anger. I mean, because it has to do with healing. That's why people go to therapy. This is the sort of thing you go to therapy to deal with. You know, I, this is actually a tale that I've told my, uh, my therapist. Do you see my machine? Uh, I see your machine. It's so, and it, and it can hold a lot of hatred and it can hold a lot of resentment toward, in my case, it could hold a lot of resentment toward all Christians, whether they had something to do with it or not. I mean, and this was a brother in church, you know, so I'm going by just brother and I, I didn't do Catholic. I wasn't Catholic. I wasn't Presbyterian. I wasn't Amish. Those are complete. They, those people who come from those denominations have a completely different view of, of how it was for them and their idea of what Christianity is. Um, but in recent times, I've met a good, a great number of people who, in my eyes, I would view them as a witch. I would view them as a witch, but I don't think they would view that. And they, and and they would not view themselves in a, as a pagan. But we are kindred spirits. We, we view the world in similar ways. We, you know, do different sorts of divination, work with cards, you know, all kinds of stuff. And so the, I, I feel like everyone has a point where they, 
not everyone, but a lot of people in their path, they have that angry point. They have that point where they want to pick apart Christianity and they want to take every single holiday that Christians have and be like, well, you know, this came from this and this came for this. And that was really a pagan holiday. And yes, it might be true, but like, what's the point of, of focusing on that? You know, and couch. I lost the banana gun in the couch. Well, when I'm done with my video, we can look for it. But mommy was here first and I'm going to finish up what I'm doing. Please don't eat my hair. Um, I wanted to touch upon another point. I'm trying to remember what it was. Let's see if I have it marked down here. Okay, I already covered that. I already covered that. Uh, the picking apart the Bible and people, a lot of people will go into these rants about why they're not Christian. I'm not Christian because I don't believe in patriarchy and, you know, and there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that's really horrible. And the thing is, though, there are a lot of Christians who agree with you when you say that, because as I said, not all Christians follow the Bible in the same way. I mean... And some people will read this and be like, you're a Christian sympathizer. And when I, when I try to talk to my mother about, you know, being open-minded to the Christian beliefs, her, her thing is she still doesn't accept that I'm pagan. She just goes, well, you're, she's like, you sound like you're talking like Jesus. You just sound like a good Christian. So either I'm a, a really good Christian or a, a really bad pagan or a really good pagan and a really bad Christian. I don't know. Um. But I'll give you a really prime, <laughs> wonderful example from my own youth. <laughs> Am I, we a totem pole. I, I can give a really good example from my childhood. You, For example, my mother follows the path Boo. of once saved, always saved. Boo. So if if you're not Christian, or even if you are Christian, you know there's there's the belief that once Mama. you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, there are Christians who believe that you never have to do that again. Sometimes you have to rededicate yourself, but you never really have to do that again. But then there are other Christians who believe that no, if you go astray, even after accepting Jesus Christ into your heart, is that it's you're, you're gone and you need to accept him into your heart again in and that's that was a big separator between uh, buddy stop i am not having butt jokes on my channel i've already talked about poop two videos before that i think they're tired of hearing about butts and poop <laughs> um but my, my mother and her father had very big disagreements my mother was under the, as i said victor one this is Mama's time. This is Mama's time. I see you. This is Mama's time. Let me finish my video. Let me try to wrap it up, Mr. Interruption. Um, my mother believed once saved, always saved. My grandfather did not believe that at all. He, as I'd said, you know, you can, once you go astray, that you have to rededicate yourself. And um, my, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather was a I can never remember if it was a preacher or a pastor because one type you need all kinds of education other one you need only a certain amount of education whatever the case is he used to, to do <laughs> sermons <laughs> hey that's enough he used to do sermons in a small chapel in the village like the town where he lived well, he um, and he studied the book of Revelation and in the book of Revelation they talk about the book of life and how your name can be blotted out of the book of life that is a prime example of two totally different beliefs even though they they're both Christians they have completely different beliefs and that used to cause huge arguments so my thing is what why are we as pagans having arguments in communities among each other about someone else's beliefs when they're having arguments too it's a waste Instead of focusing on what you what don't you believe, say, how about you focus on what you do believe? Say. Oh, no. Now I'm telling people what to do. I'm doing that again. But, um, I, yeah. There's, there's, I don't see a reason why Christians do and pagans should me? hate each other. We are, we have to live do in the same community. Me? I see you. We have to live in the same community. There are parents. There are siblings. There are they are our families and our friends and we can learn to agree to disagree you know or find what we have in common and embrace that yeah 
I'm going to wrap this up because I... Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah, that, that, that's going to be all for today. I hope I got my point across. I got uh, this video yeah. made. Just be Yeah, done. go me. Just be done, you say. Oh, baby, yeah. you die. Uh, I hope my children did not distract you as much as they distracted me. I hope I was able to um, get my point across. <laughs> but that is all. You all have a wonderful night. Thank you for watching. Bye. We love you. Bye. I'm blowing kisses. I'm blowing kisses. Oh, I get kisses. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Let's see our video.